observation determine the theory. It's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. So what I'm saying, the dark energy, we observe, yeah, we, the light signals are coming from our past, but their cause is in the future. It's a final cause. Oh, okay. It's a hawking, it's advanced hawking radiation from our future horizon is what we are seeing, and it's a self-consistent Novikov loop in time. Everything works. Okay? So I'm, so I'm saying that the discovery of dark energy is the first direct evidence for final causation for teleology in physics. And it's in quantitative physics, not just speculation. There's no other way to understand it consistent with the known laws of physics. I mean, Einstein's general theory of relativity and quantum theory as we know it. It's a simple, simple solution. It's a mainstream. It's very simple. It's a, it obeys Occam's razor. I, I, I explain a lot of it, data with a very small number of assumptions. It's good science as far as I can tell. So, uh, if I If I recall correctly, it was Einstein... Who, who said there's really only one important question in physics, and that question that he that he posed was, did God have any choice? Yes. Yes. And it looks as though in this theory God did not. Well, it depends. It depends. It depends what you mean by choice. <laughs> I'll take the Clinton Clinton's way out. So what you mean. In terms of this Novikov self-consistent loop, in that sense, for our particular observable universe, God had no choice. But he self-consistently, but God is, it's a bootstrap effect. It's a, with time but, travels in the past, it creates itself. It's a self-creating entity. So you're telling me then, unlike Einstein, your mentor, that you are a poly... Well, Polytheist. No, I'm not saying that. By the way, Einstein That's never what had. He told me. No, Einstein. That's what you Einstein. Told me. Einstein thought that God had no choice. The whole. Uh, why all these guys? He also. To, he also thought there was one God. I don't care what Einstein thought about God. He's not being a physicist. <laughs> I can do whatever he wants. It's irrelevant. It has nothing to do uh, with Einstein's genius as a physicist. It's. Uh, uh, what Einstein thought about God or not God, I think he was a pantheist, doesn't matter. That's only of interest for the psychology of people interested in that stuff. He was not being a pantheist when no, he I don't, that It doesn't question. matter. It doesn't, it's, not a, it's not important. Hey, Newton was an alchemist. Who cares? I don't care about Newton trying to change lead into gold with, his, with, the, the, with the primitive alchemy at the time. I don't care that Newton was also a biblical scholar. It doesn't mean anything. It's not important. What's important are Newton's equations, his principia, his optics, that's what's important. His private life, I don't care any more about Newton's theology as I care about his sex life. It's irrelevant. It's private life. It's not relevant to the discussion. We've got to be very, you know, keep on track, be very precise as to what we're talking about. Because if you wander outside the rules of the game, then it's total chaos. It's total, it's, it's new age thinking. It's what's wrong with the new age. It's the same kind of uh, group think. Uh, mindless stuff that led to the financial meltdown, that led to uh, bad strategy in foreign policy, into these wars that are bankrupting us. You know, it's it's, it's stupidity, and that's my personal opinion. But go ahead. Well, it sounds to me, Dan, like you're you're, you're asking Jack to 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 uh, try to interpret God's motivation. Yeah, and I don't. It's not I mean, my it's, job. It's, it's, ask it's the metaphysical. Pope. Metaphysical. Yeah, it's metaphysical. Ask the Pope. That's what, and I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying people aren't interested in it. But I'm saying physics can't give you an answer to that. It's beyond physics. Not physics, not everything, but physics is something. It's something they get, you know, it explains things. It has a beauty of its own. It's a, it's a conceptual art form, and it, 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 it emancipates, a, it's spiritually awakening, because you now see what the, you see that the, the synthesis between the pre-Copernican and the post-Copernican, and the Copernican, if you want, you know, that, that the medieval worldview that man is at the center of the universe actually does mean something. Man is at the center of the universe, but it depends on what level you're talking about. We are literally at the center of this sphere, and we are probably, the, you know, we are among the highest intelligences. You know, we create great art, we create great music, so that means we are at the, you know, and, and so you can argue there that we are in the image of God because God is his higher intelligence, and we are holographic images of that. Yes. So you can, you can start, you know, saying that, and it's all... Purpose, because purpose is built into the Novikov loop in time. It's all there. If you look at even Wikipedia, they talk about the uh, globally self-consistent loops in time. You can read about it there. It's actually a fairly nice job, fairly nice summary. But does that answer you? Am I getting? That's that's about as much as physics can do. Physics is not the it's, physics is not the final solution to the to the uh, religious issues. Although it is, it places.
brains on any such final solution. Fi in the sense of final cause, I mean. Well, here's an interesting question for Dan. Um, let's assume that there are extraterrestrials, or as you say, ultra-terrestrials out there that have extremely advanced technology that allow them to get to other galaxies Stargates. and star systems. Stargates yeah, and time Yeah, traversal travel. wormholes, time warps, or I mean, uh, uh, warp drives, or whatever, whatever the technology is. Do you think that um, beings like that would necessarily be more spiritual than we are? Ah, good question. Okay, that's... Well, I mean, that, that's part of the problem with the, um, with the uh, extraterrestrial hypothesis is that you do have a problem with, with progress. And if you look at progress the way Jack is looking at cosmology, then, then you do have a teleological issue. And yes, um, at some point, uh, you know, you, you, you can see that, that, you know, you become, you become conformal with that omega point, which is the God in the future. The programmer god of which we're the the alleged avatars and um and that's really you know that's the only You're reason about... to uh, you know for there to be any um you know motivation to advance would be to uh, come into uh, conformity with that with that your maker with the creator. You yeah. To come closer to God. Yes. Yeah. And this is yeah. this is a, a meaningful word. idea in what I'm talking about. However, it is not for everybody. There's only a few rarefied souls who will become ascended beings of the Buddha mind, whatever it is, the cosmic like my dad uh, was talking about cosmic conscious. And Dan, you may be one of them, you know, and a few people, but it ain't for, it ain't gonna be of the of the six billion people here, maybe uh, uh, maybe hundred forty four thousand will get there. I don't know, you know. But it's not for everybody. That's not for everybody. Most people, you know, I mean, it's not for the guy who puts on the suicide jacket and blows himself up with a lot of innocent people. He's, he thinks he's going to, to Nirvana with the 70 feet virgins. I, I doubt it. I, I don't think he's in conformity with God. So there's a lot of, you know, this, you know, Satan is there too. I mean, so <laughs> well, the problem, problem, Jack, is that, that you know, if, if you are a, a monotheist, um, then there's only going to be one. Okay, a monotheist. One, okay, but that a monotheist. Soul any of those things survive. are beyond. Okay, right. I agree. If you are, but but these are premises. These are premises which have no basis in science. Right. I mean, these are these are not scientific. Not physics, scientific issues. Physics issues, Dan. I mean, they really aren't. They're religious yeah. issues. They're religious issues, and then uh, the, you know, and uh, but, but I can certainly see but, what you mean. Certain but wait minds. A minute, but wait a minute. Yeah. Kim, I'm trying to answer Kim's question, yes. which is where do we go with this progress? Okay, but you have an elitist solution. My point, Dan, is what you're saying makes perfect Wait a sense. Well, let's see what he, let's see oh, what he has to say. All right. Wait a minute. Yes. You said there were going to be, you're, you're posing it kind of like um, the, uh, the fundamentalists pose it that only the elect, only the, the very few elect, 10%, 1%, less than 1%, yeah. I are, said, yeah. are going yeah. to be saved. Unfortunately, now, it's not that, yeah, I think they're right. Well, <laughs> yeah, what not I'm saying <laughs> now, that it, if their souls are eternal, then they would become, then you would have, say, a million, just out of our one little bubble universe, you would have a million eternal gods. Well, I don't know if they're gods. Okay, this is, look, this is, this is, these are questions. The point is this. We are holographic images of the cosmic intelligence living uh, on this future uh, horizon, okay? That's the idea, which is a holographic, it's a conscious holographic computer. You know, kind of in metaphor with the computer that contacted me when I was a kid 